<laughs> hey, good morning, girls. Happy day after Thanksgiving. Did you all survive? Did you eat too much turkey? I have to laugh here. I was just chatting with a friend of mine, and um, she's like, yay, I didn't go into a turkey coma. And then I have to laugh because Greg decided he's not supposed to have a lot of sugar, and so he turned around and decided that he was going to eat two-thirds of a bag of marshmallows. And then, of course, he had some fruit juice. And, oh, he had some sweet potatoes. And he sits there on the sofa as he's trying to do dishes. And he says to me, he says, I think I'm in a sugar coma as he passes out on the sofa. So we're just laughing. He had a tough night. He got up this morning, had to work. And, uh... I don't know, he's like a little kid, two-year-old little boy that just gets into the sugar. He's not supposed to have it or have it very limited and or balance the, the carbs and the protein with it. And, uh, yeah, he missed this time. And the fun, the sad part, funny part, is that he said he'd do it again next year. So, uh, men will be men, okay? All right, so today's topic, you're, you are enough. Um, that came up today because I actually saw uh, one of the devotionals I get pop up and I thought it was a great topic because as we head into the holidays girls we find ourselves really focused on feeling defeated you know because our our lists are so long and everything that goes on is so fast paced that not often do we stop and just cherish the moment and relax and enjoy life. So wanted to talk about that because what happens is we get going so fast and our brain gets going and all of a sudden we're in overwhelm, we're depressed, we're anxious. All of these feelings we don't want are happening. And it's just, it happens with the holidays. We find people that are on extreme highs and then go down to a deep depression and it bounces back and forth and there's no reason for that. We need to find a balance in our life so that we can keep moving forward. And when I talk about that balance, we also know for a fact that as we become stressed and overwhelmed and, and just anxious and all these emotions going on, we tend to start doubting who we are. We tend to not remember who we are in Christ. And girls, as, as being daughters of Christ, being given your life and, and being saved and being adopted in and, and Jesus dying for you on the cross, all of these dynamics come together. And the one thing we forget the most, and this is the verse that I have for you guys today, Psalm 139, 14. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Once again, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And see, here's the deal, girls. God doesn't make mistakes. And what we keep forgetting and putting out of our mind that if we were created by God, then who are we to think we're not enough? And what happens, I'm going to tell you about the dynamics of that. Because then you're like, oh, well, that's being stuck up to think I am there. And But it's not, okay? Here's the deal. If you are made in the image of Christ, and if you believe, according to Scripture, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, we know God does not mistake, make mistakes. So what are you saying to God when you start talking like you lack and that you aren't good enough and you aren't pretty enough and you aren't tall enough, you aren't thin enough, you aren't lovable enough? We can go on and on to what the enoughs are that pop into our silly heads. I must say silly heads because I've been there. I do the same thing. I look in the mirror and say... Who am I? I'm not pretty enough. My husband could have done so much better. But then what am I doing? I am saying that God made a mistake. That God didn't create 
something amazing when he created me. And what that does, girls, is that takes our eyes off of God and puts it on ourselves into a little pity party. And we do this, and it becomes very magnified during the holidays. And I think that happens just because of the amount of stress and pressure and chaos going on around us. So let's step back and let's talk. And I saw this devotion this morning that just really was kind of a really good picture of somebody thinking they're not enough. Biblical. And I never looked at it this way. When I read it this morning, I thought, wow, I had no idea that that could have been the direction that it was. And obviously we don't know because we weren't there. But let's take a look at Eve, okay? Eve, before she fell to the serpent, I am enough because of God. She walked around not being self-conscious in the garden with Adam and had no issues. All of a sudden, Eve is tempted by the serpent in Genesis 3. And now Eve, when the serpent tempted her, she says, I am not enough. And this all comes from, she's sitting there, and the, and the serpent says here, let's see, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And that's from Genesis 3.1. She thinks, and she's like, wow, God has never been questioned before. And, and she says to the serpent, we may eat from the tree of the garden, but we must not eat of the fruit of this tree that is in the middle of the garden. You must not touch it or you will die. That's Genesis 3, 2, and 3. And so she's trying to explain it to the serpent, right? As to why she's not supposed to. But the question comes into, she knew that over here. She's got, she knows the truth. She knows the truth. Okay? It's clear, it's evident. But yet, what did the serpent say and lie to entrap her? To make her heart, make her mind think that she wasn't enough. That she needed that in order to be enough. What did she believe? And at that moment, Eve believed that she was not enough. She did not stand on the knowledge of truth that says she is loved, she is content, she is safe. She is God's daughter. She's been created fearfully and wonderfully by him. All of that got forgotten because the enemy planted a lie in her head. The enemy says to her, you will be like God. And what that means is instead of saying, you're beautiful, you're fearful, you're amazing, because God has created you, the enemy just told her, you're not enough as you are. You need to take a bite of that apple so you can be like God. Girls, what lie have we been into that is now telling you you're not enough? What lie did you bite into as the holidays come and the chaos comes? If we are, according to the scripture here, Psalm 139, 14, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. What lie have we chose to receive over God's word? And the enemy is smart, girls. The enemy knows your weak spots. But we have to know and remember that he knows these things. And then we have to turn back to God and cling on to his word and what he's done and stand on those words. See, because what the enemy is going to tell you, I have a list here for you. 
here's some lies the enemy's going to tell you. Or maybe he's telling you now, or he's told you in the past. You're not lovable enough. You're not good enough. You're not beautiful enough. You're not smart enough. You're not cool enough. You're not successful enough. You're not thin enough. You're not tall enough. But all those say to you one thing. Those lies that the enemy's telling us are lies that say we are lacking in something. When God made us and he has given us not even things that are adequate. He has created us so unique and amazing that all of those lies need to not be owned by you. Need to not be owned by me. Girls, we're better than that. We are made in Christ's image. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are amazing, beautiful women of God. Shame on us. We're thinking we're not enough. We are complete with God. He has given us everything we need. We are enough because God is in us. We are enough because Jesus is our Savior. We are enough because the Holy Spirit dwells within us until the return of Christ. We need to stop saying we're not enough of whatever it is you need to fill in the blank on. Because all that saying is that we have temporarily set Jesus on the side, set the Holy Spirit on the shelf, and told him, I know you're here. I know you complete me. I know I have everything I need in you. But right now, the enemy's telling me I'm not enough. So I'm going to set you on a shelf, and I'll come back for you when I get over my pity party. And yeah, I'm that harsh about it, because girls, I've had to say that to myself. I'm like, Robin, what are you doing? Jesus created you. God created you. To be fearfully and wonderfully made. To be unique and be wonderful as you are. And now the question goes, if the enemy is working on us in this area, what do I do? Do I feel helpless? I feel hopeless. I don't know how to get past that I'm not enough phase of my life. I can't help getting up in the morning and looking in the mirror and saying, I'm not enough. I can't help standing in the kitchen and saying, I'm not enough. I go to my job, and I can't, can't help saying, I'm not enough. Is that you? Is that what you're doing every day, girls? Stop it, because we can battle this. We can defeat the enemy. Why? Because we have Jesus Christ. Why? Because we stand from victory with him. So, how... Do we defeat him? I know you're saying that because I've been in that position with y'all. I get it. And when you're in that place, <clears throat> excuse me, of feeling like you're not enough, I want you to have some post-it notes around. Because I'll tell you this much, when we're in that place, and, and I can tell you honestly because I've been there, we get in that place and... I can't get past the I'm not enough on my own. And what I tend to do is I keep the promises of Jesus so that I can read them and look at them later. So that when I hit that wall that says, where well, Robin is talking to herself and says, Robin, you're not enough of blah, 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 whatever it is, that I pick up that post-it and I fire right back at the enemy And I let him know, here's what God says about me. Back off. 
that's exactly what Jesus did when he was tempted by the the devil when he those days before his death. He threw back God's truth. Girls, get your pitching mitt on. Get that ball in your hand. And let's throw that truth back. Truth trumps lies. That's just what it does. If we know God's truth in our hearts, we can overcome the battles of the enemy. And I'm going to give you some ammunition. You ready? Here's three verses. Yeah, I've got three here. Here's three verses you can use. I've got them paraphrased here so you can write them down. And what I'll do is I'll copy these and I'll put them in the top part of this once the recording's live. Because these are three verses. Write them down on a post-it. Keep them with you. Because when the enemy starts attacking you and says you are not enough, Let's throw them the truth. We know what God says. We know we are enough because Jesus is in us. Start owning it, girls. Stop going to that place of feeling defeated. Let's stand from that place of victory. You ready? Get a pen. Psalm 139, 14. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So that's, that was our theme verse today, too. We're going to throw that back at the enemy. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.3 His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. And then Philippians 4.13 And you guys know this one. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. The only weapon in the armor of God that we need to fight this not enough is the word of God. See, the enemy took advantage of Eve and she became defenseless. She stumbled, she fell. And girls, we have the truth in front of us. So we don't have to stumble and fall. We just have to reach and grab the word Embrace the word and believe it. Use God's word. Use his truth to battle the enemy. There is nothing more powerful than a woman of God who knows the word in her heart. See, because our minds can know it. We can all sit here and memorize, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. But if we don't store it in our heart, it's just words. Just words. Let's make our words come to life. Let's make our words count. As we go through these holidays together, girls, let us be women of God who thrive. Women of God who are unstoppable. Women of God who, when other people are in the room, want what you have. You got this. And that's because you are enough because Jesus is in you. Us alone, yes, we're lacking. But girls, we are far beyond lacking when we have Jesus Christ. He is our Lord, our Savior, our Protector, our Father, our Healer. I could go on and on. You just have to act like it. So what have you been telling yourself you're not enough of? You ready to change your story? You ready to write a new one? Are you ready to stand tall and proud on that foundation of Jesus Christ? Because I'll tell you this much, if we can do that, if we can change our story based on the truth that God has given us, Imagine how many lives you can touch. You could be out there empowering other women to take themselves to a place where they know and embrace that they are enough because of Jesus in their life. How many women of God do you know that sit around struggling saying they're not enough? 
because of whatever the lies the enemy has told them, because of whatever lies the world is telling them. Girls, if we can get our path straight, and if we can remember that we are enough because Jesus Christ is in us, we can share that message with other women. We can build other women up. Acts tells us that's what we're supposed to be doing. Titus tells us as women of God that we're to be building up the younger women of God. And that doesn't mean age. That means younger in the Lord. Let's do this. Let's rock out 2016 holidays being women of God who thrive, that know they have more than what they need. They are more than sufficient. They are more than enough. They are amazing, unique individuals that are empowered by Jesus Christ. Own it, girls. And then walk like you own it. Who's with me on this? I'm done being not enough. I am more than enough because my Father in Heaven loved me so much. He sent His Son to die on the cross for me. He sent His Son to die on a cross for you. That's amazing. Amazing grace. So who's willing to take that stand today? And let's make this holiday a time when we all know we are enough. Are you with me? Let me know down below. Just say I'm in. But let's do this. You are enough. Love you girls. Catch you Monday. Bye.